2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to read it here from the little mini screen. I think it's up on the big screen. I'll read it from the big screen together. Okay. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah. Already sounds really biblical, right? A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets of the... It's like, what? Cried out to Elijah saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. This is not good. So Elijah said to her, well, what, well, what should, I, should I do for you then? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, well, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And then he said to her, well, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors Empty the vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. And then pour into all these vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons and brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. And now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, he said, bring me another vessel. And then he said to her, well, there is not another vessel. Watch this. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said to her, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons, you shall live on the rest. Oh, I love this story. I want to preach a message today. If you're writing notes, which I hope that you are, you can write down the title. It's called, There's Always More with God. There's always more. When it comes to God. Amen? And um, I'm going to pray. Hey, if you're new to church and you haven't been to church in a long time, we just want to say thank you so much for coming today. And it means so much that you would take time out of your busy schedule uh, to be with us today. We want to make a vow to you. Church is for a build up, not a beat down. And so we're here to build you up. And we're not here to throw the book at you. We're here to tell you about a guy named Jesus. He's really, really awesome. And uh, we believe that you're going to leave this place better than you came. You know, whenever you encounter Jesus, you always leave better than you came. In fact, you always leave with more than you came with. And so we're, we're believing that you'll leave with more faith, more hope, more joy, more coffee. If you single, more phone numbers. Hello, church. You never know what the Holy Ghost will do on a Sunday. <laughs> And so, Spirit lead me. But, um, and, and, you know, our value, we believe that church, it should be enjoyed, not endured. So we're going to laugh a lot today. Is that all right? We're going to have fun in the house. And uh, if God's fun, we should have fun. So uh, thank you so much for being here. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to speak. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for this awesome church. We believe that you're for us and that you're with us. We pray, God, even now, open up our eyes so we can see Jesus. Open up our ears so we can hear the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're encouraging us as we talk together. God, let us see clearly like we've never seen before. And God, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, we're praying this year that the Lakers will win it all. <laughs> Bless Kobe right now. Touch his body in Jesus' name. And we all said together, Oh, I need a better amen for that one. Amen. Where are the Laker fans at? Come on. If you're a Clipper fan, we're going to have a little altar call right over there. All right? Because you need Jesus. <laughs> anybody, anybody love more? You just love more. People that least, uh, My mom told me that my first word I ever said when I was a kid was more. Okay? Just, I was a little kid that wanted more food. Okay? They just, you want more. But I, I, love, I love more. I like when more comes unexpectedly. You know what I'm talking about? Like you ever sit there in the movie theater and you watch the movie and for some strange reason when the credits go on, you don't get up and leave right away and you're watching the credits and then all of a sudden there are those bonus scenes. You know what I'm talking about? I love it when they, or, or you ever remember back in the day, like all you iPod kids, you don't understand our pain. Okay. You don't understand. You don't understand disc players. Okay. You don't know cassette players okay so but you remember the bonus tracks you know what I mean you'd be listening to like a CD or like like a like a tape and all of a sudden you thought that the tape was over but you know you just wait another 60 seconds and there was a bonus track anybody know what I'm talking about 
There's more. Is it more. I'm telling you, this is more. Is the, uh, you clapped over that. That's awesome, by the way. They're like the bonus track. That's awesome. But <laughs> but this is a this is a happy church. But um but but more but more when it comes like sometimes it's not always a good thing. Like for example, have you met these weird people that exist today? These people that like CrossFit. It's a whole breed of people. You know what I'm talking about? They love to inflict their bodies with pain. You know what I mean? They pay somebody to inflict their body with pain. These are not normal people. The other day I was in South Africa in Cape Town. And I was with a, a, a really good pastor friend. And he goes to CrossFit. Well, this, this church service that we had, he got 11 people from his box. That's what they call it. It's weird. Um, but he got 11 people from his CrossFit gym to come to church. So we, we have church. 11 of the CrossFit people that came to church, they all get saved, and they all say yes to Jesus. Isn't that amazing? So I'm meeting them after the service, and this pastor puts me on the spot in front of the 11 uh, uh, CrossFit members. Who One of them was the owner. They said, isn't that awesome? They got saved, Chad? Yeah, this is Chad, blah, blah. Hey, tomorrow, don't you think Chad should come to CrossFit tomorrow? People, I don't know if you can tell from the lighting, but these legs were not made for CrossFit. Okay, these are ballerina legs. What? Weird, 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 weird. Wait a second, weird, weird. But, but, so, they, he put me on the spot. So, I, you ever be in a situation where you want to say no, but you don't know how to say no? And that you, and, and you want to lie and say yes, but you're in front of somebody that knows that you're gonna, they're going to hold you to it? So, anyways, so, I get myself in a predicament where I have to go to the CrossFit gym. So, we get to the CrossFit gym. I don't even know what to wear to CrossFit. I'm a basketball player, okay? So, we go to CrossFit, and we start doing the exercises. This guy has me doing lunges. Box jumps. He has us running through all, you know, all these like obstacle courses. We're doing push-ups. We're doing, we're doing things I have not done since PE, people. Okay? So we do all these exercises, jump ropes, and all this stuff. I am winded. I am sweating. I am thinking of like the croissant and the coffee I want to have. And we finish. I'm finally thinking like, well, I made it. I did it. I just, come on, man. Way to go. You know, like this is how I'm feeling. So literally the guy looks at me and he's like, all right. <laughs> Great job. That was the warm up. It's like, there's more? It's like, that was the warm up. It's like, no. It's the worst. Sometimes when there's more, it's a bad thing. But let me just tell you this when it comes to God, His more is always better than what you bring to the table. I'm telling you, with God, anybody believe that today? With God, there's always more. Oh, I love this story. It's a story of a woman that's in a desperate situation. Have you ever found yourself in life in a desperate situation? She's in a desperate situation. She's at the point where not only it, her, her husband has passed away, but now her two precious children, they're going to be taken away as slaves. So she comes to a man of God. She comes to a prophet, Elijah. And she presents her case. She says, you, you, you knew my husband. He was a good man. And now I'm in this predicament where my two sons are going to be taken away if you don't do something to help me. So the prophet looks at the woman. He says, well, this is peculiar. This is a problem. But let's figure out a solution to this. Remember, with God, there's always a solution to your problem. This man looks at the woman. He says, well, this is a problem. But what do you have? Oh, I love this question. The question that God is asking to all of us this morning is one question. It's very simple. What do you have? I cannot give to God what I don't possess. I can only give to God what I do possess. And I'm just telling you, if you'll just look at what you have as an awesome thing, if you'll just look at what you have as a good thing, I'm telling you, church, so many of us, we start complaining about the thing that we don't have rather than giving thanks for what we do have. Come on, anybody thankful for what you do have? Anybody thankful to God? Oh, I'm telling you, you ought to just have the attitude of gratitude. There's nothing more powerful than being thankful. If you'll just take the position of being thankful for what you have in your possession, I'm telling you, I may not have the best cards in the whole world. I may not have the greatest legs, but they're my legs, okay, people? You just back up off me. But 
I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for my health today. I'm thankful for my family today. I'm thankful for my savings account. I'm thankful for my checking account. I'm thankful for the things, my mind, my gift mix. Anybody thankful that you are who you are? You have what you have? Come on, are there thankful people today? Oh, you want to lift your hands and bless God and just say, thank you, Jesus. I've, I'm born another day. This is a great day to be alive. There's nothing like a grateful person. I believe God's looking for people that look at their cards and say, whoo! These are some great cards. They may not be a straight flush or they may not win me a lot of money, but they're my cards. Oh, I love Jesus. Jesus is preaching all day long to a huge crowd. And, and, and he's been preaching all day long and the disciples come and they say, uh, Jesus, these people, they look hangry. You ever see hangry people? They're hungry and angry at the same time. You ever been there before? I need a snicker bar. Hello, church. Help me people. But they look hangry. And Jesus said, he asked him one question. He said, I can see it. <coughs> Excuse me. Had some almonds in the back. Anyways, he said, <laughs> and it just got me in the throat. <clears> throat> um, but he said, he said, these people, they, they look hangry. But, but before we send them off to, to feed them in the restaurants, he looks at the disciples and he says, well, what do you have? What do you possess? And they look at Jesus and they go, well, Jesus, to be honest, all we got is like a little bit of fish and a little bit of bread. We ain't got that much. But Jesus took what they had. He took it and watch what he does. The first things he does with what we, what we have, he gives thanks for it. And a miracle is performed. And that day, the Bible says 5,000 men plus the women and the children, they all ate. Not only did they eat, but watch this. If you go over here, there's all these baskets full of leftovers. I'm telling you, church, we do not serve the God of enough. We serve the God of more than enough. Anybody believe that about God? Stop complaining about what you don't have. Start giving thanks for what you do have. You got to just say, thank God for my family. Some of you are like, well, my family's crazy. Welcome to the club. There ain't no such thing as a normal family. But you ought to thank God for your family. Thank God for your job. Thank God for the house that God's given you. Thank God for the, for the money that's coming in. I'm telling you, there's nothing like the attitude of gratitude. This, this prophet, Elijah, he looks at the woman. He says, what do you have? Do you hear her response? Uh, all I got, I got like, you know, like a little bit. I got so many of us, we complain about what we have rather than giving thanks for it. I'm here to tell you today, you ought to walk out these doors today with a new attitude a new premise, a new perspective, a new uh, 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 a good report coming out your mouth saying, I'm thankful for what I do. Anybody thankful today? Come on. You got to be grateful. He says, okay, well, well, what I want you to do, I want you to go out into the streets. Go out, he used the word everywhere, and I want you to go collect a bunch of vessels. Go get some jars. Go out everywhere. What I love about God is that the dichotomy of Christianity is that God has called us to first rest and receive. If you're a Christian here today, we live from the premise that the work has been finished when Jesus did the work on the cross. I am living from the finished work of Jesus Christ. All the laboring, all the striving has been done by Jesus himself. I am now at rest. Let me tell you something. You are at best when you are at rest. And when you just start resting in the finished work of God, of God. if you're here today and you say, what does it mean to be a Christian? The work of a Christian is simply to receive from Jesus. I receive receive his provision. I receive his peace. I receive his joy. I receive his grace. Anybody glad that we get to receive today? Anybody thankful for that today? So part of Christianity is the resting and the receiving. The other part is the going and the getting. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, the great commission, go therefore into all the nations and let's make disciples of everybody. So there's the resting and the receiving, but on the other side, there's the going and the getting. The Bible says in Proverbs, the hand of the diligent shall prosper. There's something about the going and the getting. Watch what the prophet says. He says, I want you to go, go out and I want you to go everywhere. I want you to go out and just, in other words, don't be selective. 
Don't, 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 don't box me into a certain way of providing for you. Don't, don't be uh, someone that's really exclusive. Let's be inclusive. Oh, I, I just love this about God. God is about the highways and the byways. This is not a country club Christianity. This is not for a few people. The gospel is for all people. This is not for a few tribes and a two, few tongues. This is for every single person. This is for the down and out. This is for the broken hearted. This is for any eth ethnicity. This is for any socioeconomic background. Is there anybody thankful that the gospel is good news for everybody? Anybody thankful for that today? He says, go out everywhere. I remember when I was a youth pastor in El Monte, and, um, you know, we were just starting out in the ministry. My first Sunday, we had 17 kids, and I felt like Yao Ming. I'm telling you, I felt like a giant. All these little Hispanic kids running around, and I was just like, boom, little, you know, little guys. And so I remember the church had a 15-passenger van at uh, the church I was on staff at. So on Wednesdays, on the night of youth ministry, I would, I would grab the church van. I would drive to all the students' houses. I would pick them up one by one. I would pick, fill my van. So it sat 15. We would put 35 in there. And hello, that's how you know you're in East L.A. And, um, and. And so we would fill up the van, and I'd bring them to the church. I'd drop them off and, and, and park the car. And I remember I'd, I'd come into the place, and I'd, I'd preach, you know, the gospel to them. I'd preach Jesus to them. And then after preaching to them, you know, we'd play some games and basketball and whatnot. And then I'd always take them to 7-Eleven on the way home. And, you know, because there ain't nothing like church and food. Church and food, that's a recipe for revival right there. So... <laughs> So we'd have church, we'd have food. So I'd feed them all, you know, get them Slurpees and whatnot. And, and, and then I'd go and drop them all off. And I'll just never forget that being, being a youth pastor, being a pastor, it taught me that part of Christianity is the resting and the receiving. But part of this life of faith is the going and the getting. In other words, you do your part, God's always going to do his part. Anybody believe that? Faith without works is dead. And so the, the prophet looks at the woman and he's, she, he's, he's saying to her, what? This is not just going to plop from the sky. This isn't just going to happen without a little bit of effort. Some of you want God to do miracles. Well, you know what? So how about you not only put your faith out there, but start to put your hand to the plow. You know, start to do the things that's going to open up the doors for God to do what he needs to do. And so he says, why don't you go out everywhere? Don't limit this. Don't put it into a box. Don't, don't, you know, Abraham had eight streams of income in his life. Why? Because he was creative. He was thinking about all the ways that God could move in his life. All the, you know, I've learned with God, don't limit God. Don't put God into a box. This prophet says, go out everywhere and go and get the vessels. So they go out and they get the vessels and they bring them to mom. And, and one of the first things that they do with the vessels is one of the, mess, the message translation says that they have to clean the vessels out. I'm just here to tell you today, our lives as Christians, we are vessels for God. But before God can pour out his spirit into your life, there has to be some cleaning. There's got to be, you know, some, some taking to the rag. You know, Jesus said, you, you, you know, to some, some religious leaders, he said, you guys are so worried about the outside of the cup, but I wish you would clean the inside of the cup. Come on, church. Is there anybody here that wants the inside to be clean as well? You know, let me encourage you today. We are not here on Sunday morning to wear our best and we put on our, our church clothes and, 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 you know, on the drive to the church, you know, it's like you're fighting and you're hitting your kids in the, you know, in the back seat and, and you're, you know, you, you're in a spousal discussion, you know what I'm saying? Hello, church. And, um, and then, and then you walk in, hey, how are you? Bless God. It's good to see you, brother. It's good to see you, too. And you come in for, you know, 60 minutes, and then you get back in the car and hitting the kids again, discussing again. And what happens is we think that God wants us to be clean on the outside when he's actually clean, cleaning the inside. And what happens is if you start to measure your outside world as more important than your inside world, You'll image manage your whole life, but never take care of the things that God's wanting to work in your life. I don't know about you, but I want to be clean on the inside. Anybody wanting to do some business with God, bring some healing, bring some character, bring some forgiveness. 
I'll just tell you, your outside world is never more important than your inside world. He says, before we pour out this oil, this precious oil into the vessels, let's make sure we clean them up. You know, part of coming on Sunday is just from this last week of toxicity and the things that you and I are so prone to do and think and say. Part of coming to church is just to get clean, to spend some time in his presence. How many are thankful that his presence, it cleanses us? Anybody thankful for that? So don't, 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 don't just pour out the oil. Don't just, don't just be careless with this thing. We're going to clean out these vessels. And then once they're clean, you know, that's just all you have to do to be clean is just ask God to forgive you. Boom, cleansed. The Bible says, though our sins may be as crimson, he can wash us as white as snow. So, so he said, cleanse it out, and then we're going to pour out the oil to fill it up. Oh, I love that God, he never stops halfway, but he fills us, not only even to the top, but if you serve in Jesus, we get to be served to overflowing. My cup runneth over. So, so he said, fill it to the top. I'll tell you, church, the reason why we come and receive and the reason why we come and into church and the reason why we're in connect groups and the reason why we're wanting to read the Bible during the week is because we want to be filled up. In other words, I cannot give away what I do not possess. In other words, I need to be filled up from God so that I can pour out for others. The reason why we want to be filled up with the, with, with the things of God and the Holy Spirit and the Word is so that when I get filled up from God, then I can pour out to be a blessing to others. We are blessed to be a blessing. You cannot spill out unless you've been filled up. It's like a sponge. If I take a sponge and I put it underneath a faucet, well, you know, this, this water, it will start to fill the sponge. But the only reason why I would fill a sponge is so that I can go out, I can wring that thing out, and I can use it to its full potential. I'll tell you, one of the greatest things about God, let me invite you into an adventure, that we could get filled by the things of God, we can get filled to overflowing, but I'm not keeping this oil for myself. I'm not keeping this hope for myself. I'm not keeping this joy for myself. I'm not keeping this peace for myself. I want to spill out. Come on, anybody want to be a blessing in in your world, in your workspace, in your home. Come on, church. Anybody willing to be used by God? He said, fill them up. You know, it, it, it's about living a generous life. The Bible says that the world of the generous, it gets larger and larger. In other words, if you just get allow God to fill up your cup, God will clean you out. God will fill you up. And then you'll be able to be a blessing to others. Ain't nothing better than being a blessing to others. I'll never forget when I, when I moved from L.A. back up to Seattle. And, um, you know, I was just willing to, for anybody to come join the team and help me reach young people. And I'll never forget, I was in the parking lot of a grocery store this one time. And I seen this dude. You ever seen those dudes? You don't have to ask if they work out because you know they work out. And he, this dude, he had shaved head, and he had the, you know, the veins popping, and, you know, kind of, those kind of dudes, they don't walk, they waddle. You know what I'm talking about? Just like that. And uh, so I just started talking to this guy, and, and I told him I was new to town. I just moved into town. And, um, and this guy, he had just had an affair. He was getting off of uh, steroids. He didn't have to tell me that. And um, <laughs> that made me laugh. And, um, and, and. He had a, 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 a coke addiction where he would binge on coke. And so we struck up a great relationship, and, and we started to hang out. And, and uh, I'm telling you, in fact, I was texting this guy two days ago. This was a decade ago. Texting this guy two days ago. He's still in church. He's still reading the Word. He's still serving God. Come on, you just never know if you go out and get what God will do. Anybody believe that? And so, um, you know, we started hanging out, and he said, well, I, I want to serve. I want to help out. You know, I can always know when someone's really encountered Jesus because before you ask them to serve, someone will say they want to serve. They say, how do I, I, I want to serve. How do I get involved? Well, I said, well, I'm doing this youth thing. And this guy, he, you know, because I had spent some time with him. I knew how good he was at making meals. And, and he's like a chef. I said, well, you know, we got some kids. And I would love for you to, maybe, maybe you'd want to on Sunday nights make a meal for the students. Well, you know, they had 50 kids. And I didn't think that was that big of an ask. So this guy, he said, yeah, absolutely. Well, our youth ministry in nine months, it went from 50 kids to over 500 kids in nine months. Just high school students. And, but I watched this guy. He would pull up his, his, you know, big Escalade truck, and he would feed 50 kids when it first started. Well, then it grew to 100, and he's still out of his own pocket feed, feeding, 
feeding 100 kids. And then out of his own pocket, when it grew to 200 and 300, pretty soon he's bringing these huge uh, containers of chili. And, you know, he would make the kids corn on the cob. He would make, he would make them uh, ribs sometimes and tacos. He's a white guy. It wasn't that good, but it was still, it was still tacos. <laughs> it wasn't that good. I, I, I couldn't tell him that he's too buff. So... But he, all the way, even for years, this guy out of his own pocket, and he would tell me, I have all this resource, and I'm not going to keep it to myself. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Come on, church. Anybody want to be a blessing? Anybody want to pour out? The world of the generous, it always gets larger and larger. So they, they clean out these big old jars and, and they start filling up the, the, the jars with oil and, 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 and they would fill one up and they'd say, next, and then boom, the, the, it was, they just create like this line of, of, of vessels and next and next and next. And the Bible says, oh, I love this verse. The Bible says, as long as there was an empty vessel, there was oil. As long as there was a vessel sitting here, the oil never ran out. But as soon, watch this church, as soon as the vessels ran out, the oil ceased up. I'm telling you, God is looking for some empty vessels. God is looking for vessels that were available and useful for the master. And I'm telling you, as long as you make your life available, as long as you keep cleaning out the cobwebs, as long as you keep presenting your life, listen, you may not be perfect. You may not have the pedigree. You may not know all the Bible verses. But one thing we are, we are open. We are available. We are laying our lives down. We are saying, God, pour out your spirit in my life. Lord, come on, is there anybody willing to say, God, I'm a vessel that's open and willing for the master? I'm telling you, God will always provide the oil if you provide the vessel. You just keep providing the vessel and the oil will never run dry. God will use people that were stuck on steroids, in affairs, on coke binges. He'll use people that broken and as broken as us. Just as long as there's a vessel, God's going to always provide the oil. It says, as soon as the vessels ran out, the oil dried up as it was then, it is today. And I declare that in this church, the oil will never run out. Because there will always be open, available vessels in this church. If you're a vessel, just raise your hand and say, God, use me in Freedom House. Oh, see today. Amen? I'm telling you, church. And so they finished it up. And the vessels were full, and they came to the man of God, and he says, all right, now you have enough to complete the task. Go and sell these vessels, and you can live off of the profit. I'm telling you, you always do your part. God will always do his. The thing about grace is even when you don't do your part, <laughs> God will always do his. But we're not wanting to live Natural lives, when we serve the God of the supernatural. Why would we settle for the ordinary when we serve the God of extraordinary? And I want to tell you, with God, you may be one place today, but with God, there's always more. In the book of Genesis, we see God. God the Father. But in the Gospels, He sends His one and only Son, Jesus Christ to this earth. And God the Father, amazing. God the Son, unbelievable. Yes. And through the Son's life, you and I, if we trust in Him and call upon His name, we do not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, I love John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave. He did not give His leftovers, but He gave His very best. He gave His one and His only Son that whomsoever shall believe in Him shall not what? but have what? Everlasting life. For God so loved the world. Jesus was amazing. Let's look at Jesus. Jesus walked on water. Hello, dominating. Jesus walked on water. Jesus turned water into wine. Hello, there's a party. Um, Jesus, Jesus healed blind people, deaf people. Jesus caused dead people to rise from the grave. I mean, Jesus was amazing. But one of the most fascinating things about Jesus to me was that Jesus looked at all of his disciples and goes, guys, you think I'm great. You're going to do better. In other words, this is not the end-all, be-all. There's more. There's more. 
You're going to do better. As great as Jesus was, Jesus was like, <laughs> you think I'm good? Oh, 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 you just wait because someone is coming behind me and he's even better. Oh, you think what I did was awesome. You just wait till the helper shows up. Because when the helper shows up, oh, I'm telling you, this, you ain't never seen nothing like this guy. This guy, he's going he's gonna to lead you into truth. He's going to convict you of sin, judge, judgment, and righteousness. This guy, he's going he's gonna, to um, remind you of everything I've ever said. He's going to be a comforter to you. Oh, I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, oh, I'm telling you, I'm, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you'll be my witnesses. Come on, church. It always gets better with God. There's always more with God. That just when you think that God is done, he plays another card. Just when you think that God's giving you his best, he gives you even more. Just when you think that you've got it all figured out, he, he, he shows you another revelation of how awesome his grace is. Just when you think that church is good, come on, we keep reaching more people. Just when you think that you've made the money that you think you're going to make in life, God blesses you and provides beyond your wildest dreams. There's always more with God. I'm just here to tell you good news, that we have not seen our best days. We have not stepped into the glory. The glory is still being revealed. The good thing is still coming. That with God, we can anticipate that there's always more with God. <laughs> it's almost like we think that we know his moves, and then he hits us with the left hook of blessing, that you're like, God, I never even saw that coming. You're awesome. Anybody believe that about God today? There's always more with God. And I'm here to encourage you today. You know, most of us, we have faith for other people, and we fail to have faith for ourselves. And I'll ask you today, not only to have faith for others, but would you be so bold as to have faith for you? Omar, if you can come out. Oh, come on, this... Are you kidding me? This is a man of God right here, I tell you. Talk about being sensitive to the spirit. <laughs> Go ahead, Omar. Show them what you got. Oh, what? <laughs> Don't steal my thunder, Omar. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, the tragedy would be if you have faith for others, you don't have faith for yourself. That hopefully you've started to understand with, with Jesus, it's just like, he just keeps giving and giving to me. I, I, I really don't understand it because I, I, maybe you haven't been faithful to tithe. The Bible says even when we're faithless, he's faithful. Maybe you've just started to get into this thing or maybe you've been walking with God for a long time. I'll tell you, don't you settle. <laughs> don't you rest because there's more. There's more to be discovered. There's more to be understood. There's more to walk in. There's more to give. There's more. Church, I just don't want to be the guy that shows up in heaven goes, really? I mean, if, if I would have known how expansive and awesome and how wonderful you are, I would, have, I would have lived different down here if I knew how good you were up there. I, I'm, I'm just, I implore you, don't wait for the more of heaven when there's more on earth. This is Zoe, the abundant life, the life of adventure. It's exhilarating. It's, it's beyond any comprehension, this love, this grace. And I, I just invite you today to say, there's more, there's more, there's more. Why do I read this? Because there's more. I want to know him more. <laughs> Paul goes, oh, that I might know him. There's more. There's more. There's more to my marriage. There's more to me as a parent. There's more in my relationships. There's more. There's always more when you're walking with God. And I just want to present my life. Maybe you'd be so bold 
That's to present your life, to say, God, I want the oil. In the Bible, the oil is always symbolic of the Holy Spirit. That in my life, I want to be a vessel. I want to be an open, though I may be broken, I will allow him to cleanse me out. That I will be a vessel that allows the Holy Spirit to pour himself out in my family, in my business, in my home, in my mind, in my soul, in my spirit. I'm not satisfied. I want more of him. John said, I must decrease, he must increase. In other words, I got to go away. He's got to come and make himself available. So God, here I am. And I just, I got a hunch and a suspicion. I'm going to lay it all on the line and say, God, I want more. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I'm, no, no. Listen, please hear me. God, everything about God wants you to be blessed. What's blessed? Blessed means I'm satisfied. I'm content. I'm fulfilled. I'm happy. Why are we blessed? Because we're in Christ. I am blessed in Christ, but I'm not satisfied with how much I know, how much I've learned, how much I've been dealt. I want to know Jesus more. May we never be discontent with the type of houses and cars we drive as much as we're discontent with, God, I want more of your spirit. If you'll just live that life, if you'll, I promise you today, if you'll pray that prayer today, I'm telling you, God will reveal himself more and more. Amen? It's always more with God. The best is yet to come. You bow your heads. Hey there, Pastor Josiah Silva here, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this message. I really pray that it spoke to you and encouraged you to get further along in your walk with Christ. Hey, I'm so thankful for technology and the way we're able to stay connected through all sorts of media outlets. You know, if you're watching this online through your iPhone or your iPad or on a computer or some tablet, you know, it's amazing how we can just be able to bring to you the gospel and be able to spread this message of hope with you and encourage you. Hey, if this message again spoke to you, there are two things I want you to do. Number one is begin to seek God. Ask God, how does he want you to grow through this? How does he want you to respond and be able to go further in your walk with Christ? And the second thing is share this with somebody. Maybe you know somebody who can maybe use this encouragement or this message. You know, share, you being able to share that can speak to somebody you have no idea who may be seeking for answers and God can touch their heart. Hey, also, if you're listening to this and maybe uh, you don't find your, you'll find yourself not at the place you should be with Christ. Listen, God can give you a fresh start, a new beginning, and a new life in Him. I want you to say this prayer with me if you want to experience that new life and get close to God. Say this, say, Jesus, I confess you as Lord. Come into my heart and change my life. If you said that short prayer, hey, I believe that's going to set off something where you're going to be able to then begin to get closer to God. Hey, we'd love to meet you in person. I'm thankful for the media outlets that we have, but I'd love for you to come to one of our services, whether it be on a Sunday, we have three service times at 8.30, 10.30, and 12.30, as well as a midweek campus on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Love to meet you in person and have you come worship with us at one of our services. Hey, once again, thank you for, uh, for watching this, and if God leads you, we'd love to meet you here in person. God bless you. Talk soon.